New AI tools inside of Lightroom are changing the way I edit and speeding up my edits by like three or four times. It's crazy. And what's so insane is the more people I talk to, the more I realize don't even know these tools exist. So inside this video, I'm going to show you how and why you should be using Lightroom's AI tools in your edits. Let's do it. What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside this video, we are diving into Lightroom's AI tools. Now, first off, if you haven't upgraded to the most recent version of Lightroom CC or Lightroom CC Classic, make sure you do it because that's where these new tools are available, all right? Now let's do a quick crash course. I'm gonna start at the beginning if you've never used any of these tools before and then we're gonna unpack the different layers. I think you're gonna wanna stay tuned because these tricks are going to really, really change your edits if it's anything like what they've done for mine. All right, let's hop into Lightroom and first off, just do a brief overview. I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard, pull up a new mask and show you this guy right here, all right? So the kind of oldest update that Lightroom first introduced AI into the system was with this select subject mask. You've probably used it before. It allows you to really quickly and easily select your subject in one click. And this was a game changer when Lightroom came out with it because previously you had to go ahead and do this all manually. You literally had to go and grab your brush and just brush over your subject and make that selection. It took a long time. You could use the auto mask. Most of the time it didn't work very well. However, once they added this, it allowed you to do cool things. You could select the subject, and if you don't already know this trick, you hit the apostrophe key, and you could basically select the background. So that was really cool. You could darken the background, and you could select your subject, add some mask to the subject. However, it had its downfalls. The first thing was that when you did that, you had to select the entire subject. You couldn't just select one person in the photo. Second, sometimes Lightroom just didn't know what you were trying to select, and it just didn't work at all on that photo. However, their most recent update added several things. You can now select the sky, the background, or people separately, which is really, really cool. So let's go select people. Now you can see, if you haven't already updated this version of Lightroom, it allows you to select individual people. Really, really cool. Now this isn't the time-saving part, it's not the mind-blowing part, but you gotta bear with me, because this is gonna show you an all stack on top of each other. Now, what's amazing, the most recent version, you can now apply different masks to different parts of the bodies. You can select just the face, just the body skin, just the eyebrows, just the eye sclera, which is the white parts. The iris and pupil, the lips, the teeth, the hair, really, really cool, powerful features. But what a lot of people don't realize, and this is the powerful secret, is you can actually create presets with these selections that are AI powered. So let me show you what I mean. Let's just select our people in this photo. Let's grab all the people in the shot, all right? Or in this case, just to save some time, we're gonna go create mask and select subject, all right? And make an adjustment. So we're gonna grab, say, a little bit of contrast, maybe raise the shadows a bit, the whites a little bit. We're gonna just make our subject pop off the background a little, okay? And I'm gonna go create new preset. First, I'm gonna name this. We're gonna call it, I don't know, subject brighten zing. Hit okay. Let's go up here to new preset, create preset. I've already made a group called My AI Presets. You can make a new group. And then from there, select masking. We're going to make sure this support amount slider is selected, another new feature. And then we're gonna give it a name. So we'll call it subject brighten zing. Perfect. Now, what's really cool is obviously if we go in here to My AI Presets and I go subject brighten zing, Voila, it's going to apply that. But Lightroom, when we apply it to other images, is gonna do the same thing. Automatically select the subject and apply those presets. So it's gonna save a ton of time. So, subject brighten zing, perfect. Applied in one second. Subject brighten zing, applied in one second. Okay, now this goes a step further when we take it and actually make presets for individual parts of the image. So, uh, let's take a look here. So I've already gone ahead and just to save some time, created some in this Signature Edits AI Engine Pack. And we can see we've got all these different ones I've made. I've made ones just dedicated to selecting the background, just selecting the sky, just selecting different parts of our subject. So we wanna make the subject brighter in the image. Select that, bam. Two seconds, we can brighten our subject, darken the background, right? Or let's say that the lighting is a little bit too harsh. Let's grab this photo. Say the light's too harsh on them, we can hit HDR soften. And that's just gonna raise the shadows up, lower the highlights, smooth out the skin tones, and really just compensate for overly harsh lighting. We can also do things like, well, standard portrait adjustments. So we can go in here and say, okay, in one click, let's just enhance the irises. And everything is on a slider. So just like that, we can really, really enhance our portraits, but we don't have to go in and manually touch things up anymore. It's really quick, really simple. So hopefully you see the powerful nature of this and how you can use it already. I'm gonna keep going and show you some examples that are super awesome, super creative, but 
If this has been helpful so far, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and make sure to leave a comment below. Let me know, where do you see using this and are there ways you're already using this I haven't covered so far? Okay, so let's thicken the eyebrows. Let's soften the skin, add some texture to the hair, maybe enhance that a little bit more. Make the lips a little bit more red. There's no teeth, so we won't widen those, but we are on a white background, so I've gone ahead and already created one. A layer that's just going to go ahead and raise the highlights, raise the whites, lower the contrast, the clarity, the texture, and it's going to make that background pure white. Now, you may be noticing, okay, well, that's great, Ryan. This is on a white background, cool. However, one, it doesn't blend, so we'll add a little bit of contrast to make it pop. Two, we've got this light softbox in the way of the image. So we need to fix that, all right. Let's go ahead and grab our, uh, what's it called, spot removal tool. So we had the heel and we had the clone stamp recently. Lightroom came out with the content aware fill, which is really, really cool. So we can go in here, grab this, and Lightroom is going to use AI to select and think about, okay, what should this be? It's gonna look at the rest of the portrait. And voila, it's done a pretty crappy job. <laughs> so let's adjust our brush a little bit more. See if it does a better job this time. It's very close, very close. Let's hit refresh. And what's kind of cool is it'll keep trying. So this refresh button is really nice. It hasn't nailed it, so I'm gonna delete that. We'll try and make the Size a little bit bigger. It's gonna think. And of course, for the demo, obviously Lightroom is still working on this. It's still improving over time, but can't have everything, I guess. It works sometimes. Ah, there you go. Other times, not so much. But this is a time saver compared to using the clone stamp when it works. I'll say that. All right, so let's grab this one. Same kind of idea. I'm gonna apply a basic preset just to show you what's up. So this is how fast I can now edit a portrait and do a full retouch. So there's a nice preset to start things up. Let's brighten this subject just a little bit because I want to have a really nice dark background. Darken that down. Let's make sure we expand this image to make it nice and big for you so everybody can see. And then you can apply these things individually so I can soften the body skin, enhance the irises, widen the eyes a little bit or a lot of bit, thicken those eyebrows, make the face skin nice and soft and add some detail and texture to the hair. I can do that one thing at a time, just like that. Or you can stack these effects. So you can actually grab all these layers, make sure you label them so you have separate control later, and then go up, create a preset. We'll call it my portrait, touch them. Bam, select everything, go create here, and voila. Next time, I can literally just go in here and grab my portrait pre preset from my AI presets and everything's done in one click. Like super quick, super simple, it's amazing. And what's cool is this isn't just a normal preset where it's applying a standard look to everything in the image, it's analyzing and finding those layers and those masks for you so you don't have to go through and select the hair, select the face, select the eyebrows, select the whites. Like that saves you 10 image, ten minutes per image pretty easily if you're taking your time and doing this in detail like you were before. So mind blown. Okay, let's take a few other uh, some looks at some other things we can do. One of the things I love to use these new presets for is background adjustments. So I've made a whole different series of them. One is for darkening the background, adding color, make it lighter and airier, make the background a little bit hazier, add some depth to the photo. And of course, if we have some sky, we can use a sky darken. So let's go in here, reset this photo. This is in beautiful Lake Louise, I think. No, yes. Yeah, like Louise. Anyways, so let's make it a nice preset to start. Add a little bit of exposure. And of course, I'm recording my screen, so Lightroom is struggling a little bit. And the thing is, by the time the subject is exposed, well, our background is a little bit, we've lost the vibrancy, right? So first off, we can start by just going with Make Color Pop. That's gonna grab everything except for our subject, make it pop a little bit. And we can turn that up or down. Then let's go down here to Sky Darken. That'll recover some of those highlights. Nice, and you just have to decide how much of that you want. Do you want to take it too far? It's up to you. I tend to take things way too far. <laughs> My advice for you, definitely, when you're applying these presets is play with it, apply it to where you think it looks good, and then take it back 20%, because that's typically where it actually looks good. Your eyes just are so excited that you tend to take things too far when you're starting out. I still do. Okay, and now let's go in here to our brush. We're gonna use the content aware fill on this girl right here. Because obviously the image is not as great with her in it. 
And previously I would have had to use Photoshop for this and now I can literally save myself a trip. That's not a perfect edit. However, it's reasonably close. Like I can work with this. I can then go in here maybe and do a second pass. Now this is like a little trick for you. It's kind of annoying, but it does work. If you wanna just do a second pass, but you can't get in here because you wind up going over the overlay, I like to just click and drag my way in. So like this is the weird funky section. So I'm just gonna select it. And then kind of right there on the rock is weird. So just click, drag, and then hit refresh a couple times. Hopefully Lightroom will give, a, give us a result we really like. I'm happy with that, right? So here's before, here's after. Pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty simple. Look at a couple more. So some things Lightroom still has limitations on. I'm excited for future updates because then I'm hoping it'll be able to do things like this. But another feature that it can do right now that you might not be aware of is now you can actually select objects. So let's take a look at selecting objects. We're gonna head over back to this photo here, okay? Let's apply a basic preset. We'll make it nice and bright and airy. Mm, go with this one. Okay, darken it down a little bit, grab our background, and let's say we wanna make it more airy, so we'll do that. Now let's say the bench, I just want it not quite so bright, or I want it brighter. Well, typically you would have to grab that with a brush and it just wouldn't be very accurate. Now you can go create a new mask, go object, and use this little rectangle or the brush. And just like in Photoshop where you can do object select, we click drag, and Lightroom is gonna grab that object like Pretty perfect, that's amazing. Let's try the chandelier. So we're gonna do the same thing, create a new mask, select object, grab the chandelier, and we'll see, it's on a busy background, it's done a pretty good job. So now if I wanted to enhance the details, let's say of just the chandelier, I can do that, which is really, really cool. All right. So let's take one last look at this one. A couple other ideas, if you're shooting on a smaller format camera. So you don't have full frame and you wanna kinda of get that depth, add a little bit of separation later on to your subject or you're just shooting at a high f-stop. Well, we can do that. So let's grab just a nice clean and classic preset. We'll darken things down. That looks good, but let's say I wanna make it a little bit more shallow in the background. This is one of my favorites I've made. It's called Vintage AI Bloom. And it's kind of a secret sauce of a few different things, but essentially what it's doing, let me just give you a sneak preview. It's taking texture down, clarity down, sharpness down, doing a few other things. Um, but it's really just giving us that sort of vintage blooming of the highlights in the background, almost like you had a, uh, what are those things called? The little filters you put on. You know, when your mind goes blank in the middle of something. But instead of having an actual lens filter, I can just add the effect afterwards, which is really cool. Especially at night, if you have um, lights, it's gonna add a really nice bloom to that light. We can grab our amount slider, and it's kind of like adding or lowering our aperture on demand. It's like, this is F4, here's F2. Take your pick, which do you like better, Ryan? And it's not perfect, you can't push it to the moon and back, but it definitely adds a little something when we add just a little bit. So here's before and here's after. Nice. Okay, these guys, let's go ahead and apply, maybe darken the sky down a little bit because it's pretty bright. And let's add a bit of a bloom. Maybe make the color pop a little. Increase our exposure slightly. And then we definitely have some harsh light on our subject. So let's just go with this HDR soften. All right, so we've gone from here to here. Really nice. Okay, this is a great example of how you can use the sky brush or sky replacement, not sky replacement, sky editing. So I've made one in here called sky darken and that'll do exactly what it says. Just darken the sky, nothing special. So you can do the same thing, you go in here to make the preset, hit K, go up here to select sky, and then you set it however you like. So I typically find adding a little bit of magenta, cooling it down is gonna get better colors. Of course, we'll take the highlights down, the shadows up a little bit, whites down a little bit, maybe the blacks up slightly. Then I like to take the texture, the clarity, and the dehaze down just a bit. And that's because typically when I'm shooting a sunset, I always find I overexpose part of it and blows it out. And where you have the blowout, you get these like really harsh lines. So doing that kind of compensates for that and smooths things out just a little bit. So you can see here's the mask before and after. All right, we've recovered some nice color. But I don't want to have to do this every single time, especially if I'm playing around, getting the perfect color, adding some overlays, whatever, right? We can even add a color overlay. Why not add a little purple to our sky? Just a bit. Okay, 
So we've got our sky, sky with purple. Go in here, create a preset. And now forevermore, we can just have sky with purple whenever we want. And we can adjust the amount, which is so cool. So you can grab different sunsets and apply the sky with purple, the perfect amount dialed in without having to do any masking. It's amazing. Back to the AI content aware fill. Well, we can go in here, get rid of all these balloons. I don't know if it's still thinking or if it's just doing a terrible job. That's quite funny. Oh, maybe because it's 98%. Let's see. Does that fix it? No. How odd. So you can see, nothing is perfect. <laughs> and I would hate to pretend like it's going to work perfectly for you every time, but that's a thing. Okay, let's go ahead in here. We're going to go sky darken. Maybe AI bloom. Let's brighten our subject a little bit. Oh, that's too much. Let's dial that back. I'm going to warm up our photo overall. Somewhere like that. And then we can maybe soften her skin just a little bit. Good. Now, I do wish you could select just their clothing. I'm not sure if you can. Let's take a look. So if I actually go into the mask panel here, select people, person. It doesn't let me select their clothing. And that's one thing I'm looking forward to them adding in the future because it would be so nice if I could just select her dress and add some pop and color to that. As it is, I'm going to have to go in here manually, brush it. A little bit of highlights, some whites, some contrast, and some saturation. Okay, so in a few clicks, we've managed to do some pretty complex edits, and it's just going to save you so much time. Let's do one more portrait. I think you're getting the point by now, but just because it's fun and awesome. And by the way, if you want to practice some of this by yourself, you need some images, head to signaturez.com slash free dash raw dash photos. There are free raw files for you to actually play with and kind of figure out exactly your style and what you like. Okay, so there's a signature that's moody and cinematic look applied. Now let's go in here and let's really take it to the next level by adding a background, darken, bloom out the back, perfect. Let's maybe soften the subject just a little bit and go through. Maybe let's just hit apply all, save some time. Perfect. So a few clicks here to here. Now they're pretty bright, so I can darken it down even more. Looks pretty good. Now the iris enhance, I am going to click this and just take that a little bit higher. Same with the eye whiten. Good. So from here to here in clicks rather than in minutes. So if this has been helpful, can you do me a big favor? Can you hit the like button? Make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this and leave a comment. It really helps me out. Also, if you want to grab these presets, I am going to make them available. You can grab the link in the description and grab 50% off for a very short amount of time. Not sure how long, but I want to make it available to you if you want to save some time. Of course, you can go through, make these presets yourself, figure out what you like. I've gone through, spent hours doing this and making sure they apply and work on every single photo that I've applied them to. So yeah, save yourself some time if you want. Grab them in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.